uh, our contributing uh, Friday co-host, uh, Renee Salcedo, on the front lines fighting for immigrant rights. Uh, Renee, welcome back to KPFA. Thank you, Dennis. Happy May Day to you, Miguel, and the whole crew. And uh, happy May Day to you. Uh, I'm here with Miguel and Kevin Pina, uh, and we're delighted uh, to be able to be out here over free speech uh, airwaves, bringing this uh, day devoted to workers and workers' rights. Now, on the front line, uh, the new civil rights movement is about representing migrant workers and domestic workers. Tell us about uh, that battle, where it is now, and then we're going to talk about some of the victories and some of the problems. Yes. Well, you know, the, the battles of the immigrant rights movement, as you guys know, is happening at all levels. Uh, at national level, even though we're not getting any movement from... Uh, Congress or the Obama administration, people are still fighting for legalization, for a fair immigration reform law that legalizes uh, the millions of people in this country who are not given that option at this point. Uh, but at this point, we are also focusing a lot um, at the state level right now. Just to summarize, we're uh, pushing for laws that will help protect domestic workers which are uh, an isolated industry. Uh, we're pushing for a law that will stop this horrible ESCOM program, which causes uh, local fingerprints to be automatically sent to immigration, causing thousands of deportations this year already, and causing families to be separated. Um, and then locally, Dennis, just to give you, uh, I'm just, you know, br uh, giving you a brushstroke because, of course, there's so much happening. At the local level, people are still dealing with um, ICE audits at the workplace, massive uh, levels of firing because of these invisible raids, we call them, and the fact that ICE is still in our neighborhoods terrorizing our community. We're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of work, and it's just inspiring how undocumented workers are are in the forefront. Uh, Renee, this is Miguel. Uh, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, Renee, I just wanted to ask you, uh, in all of this, you know, activity today, there's been a whole last couple of weeks, two, three weeks of massive activity up in Sacramento. Can you just, uh, you know, just tell us in, in, in a brief what has happened here in the last two, uh, two, three weeks to advance the cause of uh, undocumented workers? Yes. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have several bills pending right now in Sacramento. Uh, everything from driver, a driver's license bill to a domestic worker's bill that will assist uh, domestic workers in accessing equal labor rights. And what's been happening these past couple of weeks is that we've had the initial hearings for these bills at the uh, state assembly at, at uh, different committees, and we've had uh, victories, minor victories, some would say, but victories nonetheless because our bills have been passed by these first committees, which means that they're still alive and um, they're going to be sent up to uh, other committees for consideration and then onto the general floor. And then uh, we'll spend the summer having to do it all over again, lobbying for our bills uh, on the state end of things. But it's very exciting, again, as you know, because you've been a part of it. It's very exciting because, for example, the last time we went to Sacramento, about 100 day laborers, domestic workers, farm workers, they just swarmed the state capitol hearing room, despite the fact that the guards didn't even want to let us in. They sat down and we won. We won the vote on the ESCOM bill and on the domestic worker bill. So we're on our way, I think, to uh, passing these bills at the statewide level. It's going to be a huge victory for immigrant communities uh, and documented workers. Absolutely. But, Renee, there's one concern, and people have, have been saying that, you know, it's gone through the first phase of the committee, then then it moves on to the appropriation committee, and then finally to the floor. And there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm and hope uh, that it will pass those hurdles. But once it passes, what about the Jerry Brown factor? 
Yeah, you know, he has the power to veto. He has the power, to, of course, to, to pass the thing. But what about, you know, his, the uncertainty about the governor? You know, where is he going to move? I mean, we do know that he, in the last week he received unbelievable support from the California Correctional Officers Association. So in a way, he's almost bought and paid for by the correctional officers in California. What's going to, uh, what is going to happen when it reaches his desk? Is, is there going to be an attempt to rally him and say you have to sign this or not veto the bills? Yes, and of course that's why we need to organize even more powerfully than we have so far, and we need to get more people involved into these statewide coalitions. But, but people at the grassroots level, people who are being impacted, and that's what, you know, today is about as well. But Jerry Brown uh, has not been a friend of immigrant communities, despite the fact that he has a history supporting, for example, uh, the United Farm Workers and their, in their movement. Uh, he's been terrible on immigrant rights, particularly by supporting the ESCOM program, which causes deportation, and by being against uh, certain sanctuary laws, um, including San Francisco sanctuary law. So uh, what our attitude at this point, Miguel, is the same as our allies in, in Sacramento, which is, you know, we're, we'll, get, we'll take that step when we get there, and we... Uh, and we're very positive about being able to pressure him to do the right thing. If our bills get through the state legislature, he's going to feel the strength of immigrant communities saying, you better do what's right, buddy. And, um, you know, that's how movements have taken place historically in this country. It's not the elected officials who decide. Uh, it's the people. And I think that Jerry Brown, even though he is a powerful individual, I think that um, we will be able to show to 